Hello, everyone. This is Friends in Art Places. I'm Victor Mojadin. And I am Lorena Williams, and we are a community of artists connecting through conversation. And today we have a very special guest. We have, well, they're all special guests, but we have here today Jesus Simi Alvarado. He's an El Paso artist, and he's rocking it here in the scene. Let's go ahead and let's talk to him today. Jesus, welcome. welcome. Hi, thank, you guys, thank you for, for joining us. Yeah, thank you for saying yes, man. Thank yes. you for coming along, man, for the ride. I'm, I'm excited to finally have you here because, man, you have been in the news all over social media with the amazing work you've been just churning out. It's amazing. And I'm so proud that you are an El Pasoan. I assume you're a native El Pasoan. Am I wrong? Uh, no, no, I'm from El Paso. I was actually born in Juarez. I was born in Juarez, and uh, but I... You know, I never lived in Juarez. Uh, my mom was able to bring me across the border uh, right after I was born. So um, I was, uh, I grew up here in the Segundo Barrio, uh, like block away from, from the International Bridge. Cool. Can you, for those people that are not from El Paso, um, can you give us some history, some background about you, your art, and what is Segundo Barrio? Uh, well, Segundo Barrio is the most beautiful place in the world. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Jesus Alvarado. Go by Simi. Uh, Simi is my uh, old graffiti name. I kept it, and uh, that's what, how I sign my paintings now. Um, I was, like I was saying, I was born in, in Juarez, grew up in Segundo Barrio on this side of the, of, uh, of the river. Um, I ended up getting a scholarship from Sacred Heart. So I went to oh. private school, ended up coming back to Boy High School where I graduated. I studied with El Gran Gaspar Enriquez mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. high school. And he continues to be my mentor to this point, you know, a great person and a great artist, you know. Yes. Um, so this basically kind of me in a nutshell. <laughs> wow, so, you're a dynamic person. <laughs> and that's so little. <laughs> Yeah, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I know. I like I like how um, Gaspar keeps on being your mentor. He's continues to be your mentor. Teachers always always tell my kiddos, "I'm always there." You know, to my students, "Hey, I'm always your mentor. I'm I'm cool. I'm always be your teacher. You ever need advice? Come get me. Come talk to me." And I guess you 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 do the same, right, with Gaspar? Yeah, definitely. You know, Gaspar has uh, he influenced me a lot when I was in high school. And like I was telling you before, I I I went to private school. I went to uh, Our Lady of the Assumption. From there, I went mm -hmm. to cathedral. Uh, but you know, it it's uh, I, I often talk about how private school is a great you know educational you know experience. But culturally, for me, was was not you know going from single mm -hmm. to to a different environment that was not uh, it was not me. It was yeah. it was not my my people. So when I left the cathedral and I went to Bowie, there was a, a time where I think I found myself culturally nice. and, you know, a lot, you know, a lot was happening at the time. So seeing uh, what Gaspar was doing at the time, painting his students, you know, uh, he had already done it by the time I got there, but he continued to do that, uh, that whole theme. Um, it was different for me. You know, I started seeing art in a different way, you know, art, you know, somebody that was painting to represent our people. Yeah. Um, and then he started getting those those images into museums, yeah. and then at the uh, at the time I didn't know because you know Gaspar is really humble. You know he's a really uh, person that that you know he was already a really recognized artist when when I was in high school, but you didn't know that because he didn't flaunt it. He didn't he didn't uh, talk about that. But um, you know people were not really accepting that in in. Or, you know, those paintings being in the museum. And I remember reading some of that, you know, seeing, you know, why, why do we have pachucos? Why do we have these cholos in the museum? Yep. And also he was, he came through a time, you know, he kind of like, you know, earlier we're talking about teachers, you know, you, they're setting, they were setting the, the path for a lot of us. You know, he did all that work for us already. Uh, so I, I remember seeing all that. So that really was really a big impact for me, you know, to see all that. And um, also, uh, Going back to Boy, I remember we had an organization called Mecha, Movimiento mm -hmm. Chicano Aztlán, and we had Chicano Studies, you know, which was really interesting. And so important. I kind of fell, it, it just kind of fell, I fell yeah. in like, this weird world where I was like, I found myself. And I was, yeah. So I started like, you know, like 
my brain exploded you know it was crazy so that that's you know that was my experience going through that and you know with with gaspar and i think being from the barrio um the imagery in the area the murals and especially lincoln park and you're just in, engulfing all of that and i i've mentioned before that i learned about my history not in school in the history book i learned about my history by looking at the art that people that were like me were putting on the walls that's where i learned about my culture and what my the beliefs of my culture and where we came from and how we connected that's our education and, and, yeah, until we have Chicano studies now a little bit more in the, in our schools, but that didn't happen when I was in high school. There was no such thing as Chicano studies. Yeah, you know. And, and you know, I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut you off, but no, no. I, unfortunately, I think even now uh, mm -hmm. we 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 see it, and I think that's that's where my focus, the focus of my work is now. We yep. see it that um, we as artists, not just just not visual artists, but poets, musicians, everybody that that, that can contribute. We are becoming those those teachers, and mm -hmm. um, the, the educational system is not doing exactly what you you said right now. And it's not because of the teachers that are working in the schools right now. It's because of the system, yes. right? Those those stories, that history is not being taught to those kids. So we go out and we tell them, "Hey, man, be proud of who you are. Like, what are you doing trying to act this way? If you're not of your culture, be proud of your culture." But they don't know their culture. Exactly. Yeah. Because, you know, the system is not telling them, right? But even, even at the last election, uh, we saw where people were trying to pull some lessons out of the books. Lessons that are necessary, lessons that are of people of color. Yep. So that's when I, you know, we started realizing like, yes, we need to keep doing that. Keep exactly what you were talking about. We need to put these stories on these walls mm -hmm. so that at least this kid says like, who the hell is that? Well, you know, that was Abraham Chavez. We have a theater named after Abraham Chavez, the first Hispanic uh, conductor, but we don't talk about him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, who the hell is that? That's, you know, that's Steve Krasno. He's not Chicano, but he put a lot of Chicano music on the radio. And uh, all those oldies that you listen to on Sundays, thank you, yeah. Krasno. Yes. You yes. know, so all those stories, I think that's why, you know, we have to be those teachers. And, you know, we have to go out and, and t teach all these kids to be proud, but teach them the real stories. You know, I often have to be careful about, you know, saying it was not just Cesar Chavez. You know, what about Carlos Marentes that was working in Segundo Barrio and is still working in Segundo Barrio for the farm workers, but mm -hmm. he's still out there, you know, working for them. You know, thank you, Cesar Chavez, but let's recognize our people in our own communities too. And um, anyways, I went on a... No, no, you're <laughs> no it's all right. Very man. well said. You, it's it. obvious that you, you uh, take all of this to heart. And I think it shows in your work. And that's why people connect to your work, because you're saying exactly what we need to hear and see, and we understand it. When that passion is there, it shows in the work. Yeah. It shows when you, when you speak, man, and you know, it, it's a beautiful thing. There's a lot of people that are, that stay quiet, even our generations past, like our fathers. My mother was not someone that was very outspoken and stuff, and a lot, lot of the generations back, I feel they were kind of that way too. Right now, we have these platforms, social media, to be a little bit louder, you know, have our voices heard, kind of change things, you know. This is the this is the time we're living in a in a time, man. If you had to describe yourself as an artist, how would you do? How would you describe yourself as an artist? I guess is what I'm asking. Well, I am. I I I use I use the the term. I am a Chicano artist. Um. I, you know, because I had a, my studio's in Segundo Barrio and it's, uh, it's really close to, to the International Bridge and really close to the bus terminal, Sun Metro. And uh, it was really interesting to me that I had a kid from, uh, uh, I shouldn't call him a kid, uh, a youngster, a youth. <laughs> <laughs> I was attending UTEP and um, I had my doors open to my studio and, you know, I, I, I saw him peeking in. He's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just painting. This is my studio. And I invited him in. We were talking for a while. And he's like, he, tell, he told me, he's like, it's a shame that there's no more Chicano art. I was like, wait a minute. What do you mean there's no more Chicano art? <laughs> where, where do you go to school? And he's like, UTEP. And I'm like, this is interesting. You know that, you know, what, what do you mean there's no Chicano art? And, and, um, and you know, so I, I still 
call myself a Chicano artist, although, you know, there's still this whole discussion about Chicanismo and the movement being dead. You know, it's not. I think it's just uh, kind of like what Victor was saying, you know, a lot of times, you know, we're, we're not that outspoken. And uh, it's a discussion, uh, conversations that I have with uh, with Phyllis, who's a, Gaspar is a, a partner. She says, you two are too humble. Our people are too humble. Your people are too humble. I think we are. Yes. Uh, I think we, we need to start claiming our spaces. And I think uh, through our work, I think that's how we that's how we do it. That's how we t- teach our parents. That's how we teach our, our elders that it's okay to say that this is our land, that this is our property, that this is our city, that this is our barrio. Yes. Because we have been here for more, <laughs> for longer than anybody Thousands else. Of years. And, um, and basically, if you want to say that we built it, we did build it because we are a community of workers and proud workers. And, uh, and I think that that's where, that's where we, we need to be more outspoken. But I guess to answer your question, I am a Chicano artist. <laughs> <laughs> My art is cultural and political. You know, a lot of times you don't see the political uh, because I don't want to be too, too upfront and too you know, confrontational, if you want to say that. You know, I want I want you to see it. I want you to think about it. I want you to uh, think, you know, have a conversation about it and, and understand it. Mm-hmm. How do you think El Paso uh, receives your work? And how do you think El Paso supports your work? And by I guess El Paso, I also mean like the leaders of the city. I think uh, it's been more acceptive because, you know, you want to talk about the city and you want to talk about arts and culture and all that. We have to see kind of the, some of the history of that because it it, it has gotten better. Uh, I left at El Paso in '99 uh, for the same reason. I didn't see myself trying to make a living in El Paso as an artist. Uh, I came back in I think '07, and there was already like a an, like an established uh, museum and cultural arts department. Right after a year or two, they started granting out money to to artists and art and artists uh, organizations. Um, so, th- so this has been a, a, a sense of a, um, structure, you know, start getting better. You know, I think uh, um, as, as we get older, or some, of, some of us, some artists, you know, we have seen how it has developed into, into what it is now and how people like Gaspar and all these other artists have actually had to struggle to, to get funding or to do art here. Um, so that's why we have to respect what they did because they actually stuck it mm-hmm. out and, and they created that path. But we have to see where, where it was then and where it's now um, to see where the art has been accepted. You know, I think we are being more outspoken. Yeah. We are being, uh, we are creating more. There were some times where I, I kind of stopped, you know, in a way stopped, I don't want to say stop caring, but I started like not um, asking for permission from the city, asking for permission from, from political leaders to do what I want. You know, yeah. what I'm doing is focused on Segundo Barrio and it's focused for my community. And it's not focused to please a politician or to, to please any other uh, person that is in, in, in any position in the city. Yeah, representation yeah. matters, right? It matters yeah. from the top to all the way to the people. It matters. It really does. Yeah, and I do get support from the city, but I think sometimes it gets uh, uh, confused because I do get some support, but all, not all the support that I get is from the city. I have commissions that come from corporations or from other people like NALAC uh, that uh, I got a, um, <clears throat> an award last year, you know, mm-hmm. that was, it was pretty good to help me kind of uh, keep going for, for a year. Um, and something I forgot to tell you is that I, I left my, I left the job. I'm, I'm a full-time artist now since the, like a, more than a year. I wanted um, to ask about that. Yeah. You know, and, and then I, the I, I think we had a, once a, one of the last times that I saw Victor, we had talked about it. I was like, dude, I'm, I'm, I need to, <laughs> I need to jump, you know, and I'm trying to create my safety net, but I'm, I'm kind of more scary. ready to jump than my safety net being there. So I it's finally scary. did, uh, you know, but, and it's hard, you know, it's hard to, to do that. I think Victor kind of might know that, you know, you're trying to uh, yeah. do your own thing too, but we got to do it. Yes. I'm taking baby steps. Okay, <laughs> I want I want to jump, it's, <laughs> but I'm happy. <laughs> it's a scary feeling. It's yeah, I know it is. <laughs> it's like going to Wet and Wild. You know, like you get on the tallest ride. You're like, all right, I'm gonna do it. But you're like, nah. But then like, you kind of work your way up. But you just gotta do it, man. Just like, hey, 
pinch your nose and jump in and see what's yeah. up, dude. And yeah. then you'll be all right. You'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask, uh, Sumi, uh, you were talking about how you left in 99 and came back in 2007. 2007 is about where I met you, right? That's where so. that's where our timeline like like crossed. Now, during 99 and 2007, where were you at? Were you going to, I know you were studying, right? You were, you, you want to study art or am I just making things up now? In that, between 99 and 2007, I, um, like, I left, I went to Dallas and um, yeah, I was going to school. Um, I eventually like ended, ended up dropping out of school. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was at UTEP. I left, I was at, at, um, at Central College, which is, which is in, in Dallas. Uh, you know, two babies and, and it starts getting hard, you know, trying oh, yeah. to go to school and work and, <laughs> and support. <laughs> but um, so I ended up leaving, uh, leaving school. And uh, while I was in, in Dallas, I ended up, you know, just uh, meeting some great people over there. Uh, one of them that was the director for, for MCAT for a while here in El Paso. You know, I met, I met her in, in, in Dallas and um, uh, Yolanda Lameda. We, we met up uh, in Oak Cliff, which reminded me a lot of Segundo Barrio. Uh, mm-hmm. more of a Latino, you know, more than, you know, Segundo Barrio is more Mexican-American, whether they have Latinos, you know, it's more. Um, and she had a great passion. She has a great passion for, for her community. And she, she started creating a cultural center. And I was lucky enough to be invited into her, to her movement to do that. And, uh, and we created this cultural center along with her, uh, the, the Ice House Cultural Center, which was used to be a, an old 7-Eleven. And uh, like we were talking about the 50s, you know, so it was a really old building. And yeah. there we were able to put um, uh, what we called an incubator program for organizations. Um, and it was just organizations from the barrio. It was a ballet folklorico and a theater company. And then we had a gallery. And uh, basically that's, that's what it was. And I had, we had a patio where we used to have like small little festivals. And that was where we started creating arts events for that community. And um, so coming back from, from that, uh, kind of like, we got to do stuff like this in El Paso, you mm-hmm. know, we got to do... And so when I came back and I, and I met Victor, I think we were uh, the visual poets, right? Mad visual poets was happening. Yeah. And, and uh, so I saw you guys were doing a lot of that. You guys were doing a lot of that already, you know, in, in spaces where you're creating uh, exhibits and things like that. So it was, it was great to, to have seen that coming back. Yeah, yeah. I don't even remember how we crossed paths. I know it was through MySpace. Um, oh, I know shit. if anybody's like... <laughs> Hey, <laughs> kind of young and watching it before Facebook. That was MySpace, and you for young teenagers, <laughs> and you could learn coding through through MySpace and, and all that stuff. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you remember. I don't, do you remember how? No, and also like I, I gotta be honest. At that time, I was like, man, I was a party animal. <laughs> so mm. I, I thought of that you know, kind of, <laughs> it um, it, you know, it all it's a blur, but. Yeah. Uh, That's one, a lot of one, party. <laughs> one of the, I think one of the things that I do remember that was, that was great is when we created it. and and this term I see it being thrown around more now is the the Chicano exhibit and oh know, yeah that was a Victor thing is like dude we got to do this thing and uh, I had uh, at that time I, I had already moved into the brew house we had a whole second floor and uh, we started doing events there and it, and it was great <laughs> it was great. Uh, uh, it was scary. Uh, we were loading in like 500 people, I want to say, in there and the wow. second floor. And that's not the best stable building in, <laughs> in El Paso. Uh, one time we, I don't know if I remember, it was a Chicano show, but we had Fuga at that time show up there. Yeah. Um, that year, there was the, the uh, another virus, uh, with the virus with the pig. What was it? I forgot the was name. That was that SARS? It wasn't SARS. Yeah, was yeah, yeah. So the, the, tour, the tour in Mexico got canceled and they were oh, coming wow. back. And they're like, hey, well, I mean, our tour got canceled. We're crossing back. You have an event. What, what? Come on down and play. And they showed up to play. More people showed up. And we were, I mean, that was a crazy show. But we were having some crazy shows in the, in the brew house. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. the Chicano show was, uh, and I think that was mostly uh, the, the visual poets uh, that made up that show. And then it just kind of started getting bigger from there. Uh, but, dang. Uh, they, yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thank you for hosting. And I wish you would have told me about the floor a long time ago, because <laughs> <clears throat> I've seen I saw a video just the other day with some floor falling, and I was like, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> <But> I, was, 
<laughs> yeah, that was an awesome show, and I'm glad like it. I, I it made an impact, I think, and it, it made a lot of people friends and introduced a lot of people, and that's kind of like what we're doing here too, uh, through these through these conversations. Like, hey, here are these people. I'm introducing you guys. We're we're introducing you guys to them and everything, and, and that's how we all connect, and then we just grow from there. That's dope. I want to talk about. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of um, a lot of people have probably grown up like 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 you did and what you had mentioned you were born in Juarez then you moved over here when when did you how long did you live in Juarez and at what age did you I didn't live in Juarez oh you didn't live in Juarez no, so you were just born there brought yeah. over and then there it is yeah. and for people yeah. that aren't from here okay. El Paso and Juarez are like this I mean it, we're like this that's why when I hear about <clears throat> the the false narratives about our two sister cities and it pains me because if you're born and raised here and you have family on both sides of the river we know different we know that the two are like this there there is no separation for us it's fa it's family and yeah. and the imagery from across the river and the imagery from this side of the river it 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 meshes, right? It creates this beautiful quilt-like framework that we rely on and that we want to spread to our yeah. our culture and the people that look at our art. So is that where your inspiration comes from? Is it personal stories? Is it history you want to pass on when you create your work? Where does your inspiration come from? You know, so a lot of the, I'm focusing a lot now uh, in smaller work. I mean, I'm creating murals, but I'm doing a lot of smaller work now too. Because um, of what you're talking about, I, I want to tell those stories, especially those memories mm -hmm. um, of growing up. You know, I, like I was saying, I didn't, I didn't uh, live in Juarez at all, but my grandmother, my grandfather, and my tia lived in Juarez. So we used to have to go visit them yep. uh, every weekend. And yeah, like it was a lot different when, when we were growing up. It was, yeah. you know, the, um, I, I corrected myself the other day because I, I kept saying like, we, don't have, we didn't have a border wall. But we did. And uh, I remembered uh, Mr. I don't know if you guys know about this. I remember Mr. Silvestre Reyes. Yeah. Yes. He, he was the one that actually <laughs> initiated the border wall, right? With Operation Hold the Line. Yeah. And, um, and I, I was really uh, surprised to, and this is more of personal political, That's to right. see him heading a, a, a cultural center now for, for Mexican Americans. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is kind of like ironic, but anyways, uh, it, it was a lot different. You know, we, we could just cross, you know, it, it was a lot easier, you know, mm -hmm. remember yeah. that we didn't need to have, carry our passports or our visa. American. American, yeah. You know, and some of us did stuff that, you know, I think there has to be like a, a time limit on <laughs> A lot of them had to like, you know, we taught some people how to say American, you know, it just has to get the accent, man. Of course. <laughs> yeah. And you cross and, and we did that. So it was a lot different. So we used to cross, and uh, I remember like on the weekends, we used to take mandado, you know, to, to my grandma. And um, so I did, I, I, uh, there's a print that I did, you know, of uh, the lanchas, you know, you see from the top of the bridge, you look down, you see them crossing in the lanchas. So I got to see some of that too, you know, and, um, you know, so I'm, what I'm doing now is painting a lot of those experiences because uh, I still talk to a lot of my friends I went to Bui with and, you know, in the barrio and uh, we were in the studio one day and we're talking about you know some of the music and so much just remembering about living in the tenements and having you know the smell of food you know the, the my mom used to have pajaritos you hear the pajaritos and you know just the, the ambience and then uh one of my friends like yeah i remember that too so then i'm thinking to myself you know what those experiments the experiences or memories i think they're just mine personal they're not they're not <laughs> everything yeah. that you are saying i lived and i'm pretty sure yeah. i'm older than you and everything yeah. you're saying, El Bandado to Juarez on the weekends. Mm -hmm. A ver a mis tíos to go see my uncles on the weekend. To go see yes. mi abuelita in Parral over the summer. Mm -hmm. Las aguas frescas. My family was also in Segundo Barrio. We left Segundo Barrio when I was little. My dad went to Bowie High School. All of that. Everything that you are saying, I see it. Yeah. So when I see it in, on the murals, when I see it behind you, that's my story. Yeah. We were, yeah, it's my we, story. Us three, we have we mm -hmm. have that connection. Uh, it, it's relatable. It's crazy that us yeah. three get here because my mom also went to Bowie. She also got taught by Gaspar. 
And she, I told her one day, I, I was like, hey, let me look at your yearbook. And I saw it and I saw my mom. And then, of course, Gaspar was there. And I told my mom, hey, you remember this guy? This art teacher was like, yeah, I had him, I had him in art. I was like, I didn't even know my mom had art. <laughs> but she did. And yeah, and she lived right across the street from Bowie. Right oh, across wow. the street from Bowie, man. At the, I don't know, I don't know if they're the, the Mayan apartments or the Aztec apartments. I don't know what. They're like oh, right okay. there in the, in the corner. Um, because my grandpa lived there for like forever. He was a taxi driver. Like everything that you mentioned, you know, going over. Well, it's one thing, I don't want to make it about me. But one thing that a lot of people probably don't know is like, just because my name is Victor Mujedin, you know, I have Arab background. It's not a really, it's just my father. Like, anywho, I was, I was raised in Juarez for a bit when I was younger. You know, and then we, we moved over here. I was born here. And then we moved over there. And then I came right back. And I totally relate to everything, everything that you're talking about. Just like Lorena, I was like, yeah, going over, getting the mandados and trading the, the Cokes. You know, you take your empty bottles, bring them back. And then, of course, you. one of my favorite things was every time I would go to the doctor's office, we'd go to the doctor's in Juarez. Yeah. And I would always get the tamarindo, the, the ball, like, but it was like sweet. It had to be the sugared one, man. Because the other ones were like, I'm not, I'm not digging it. But all that's relatable. My grandfather, oh, yeah. everything, man. And it's crazy. And seeing your artwork definitely brings that out. And a lot of people can share those experiences. You know, you think, you know, we think we're like the only ones, but we're sharing these things. And people are going to relate like, oh, I remember that. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. You know, like a goosebumps just going back down memory lane, man. It's cool, <laughs> man. What do you think is ha happening now to us as a, I don't want to get either politic, political or anything. Our culture, what do you think has happened now in the past few years? Do you think we're making positive strides or are we going backwards? What do you think as, as artists, you know, we're speaking to artists, what comes next? What, what message do we send our young artists that hope, I'm assuming that what you hope to see is to pass the baton, right? Want to pass the baton to future artists. What advice or what do you hope to see? I, I think we still have to have those those difficult talks, you know, those conversations. Um, I think we, that last two, three years, I think with everything that's going on in the country and in the world, uh, we have talked about, you know, reclaiming our spaces and, and, and having, you know, having, having that respect that we deserve. But at the same time, I think we need to have those difficult conversations between our own communities um, yes. because we, um, you know, when I, when I was doing this, this project with, with Nalak, you know, one of the things that I, that I started thinking about is that we need to settle our own issues within our own communities because we are kind of racist to each other mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. our own communities. So if we need to go out and, and ask for respect from other cultures or from other, yeah. you know, we need to respect ourselves first. Um, you know, we... We talk about fresas, we talk about chetos, we talk about, you know, but, uh, but we're not racist, right? You right. know, Memi Pinguin, you know, right. oh, yeah. remember Tomas <laughs> from, from that television show? Yeah, my cousin uh, was called that Memi Pinguin. Yeah, I oh. remember that. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I think we have to have those conversations <laughs> before we, we start. And, and those are hard conversations because those, yeah. are, those are things that, that, uh, that we grew up with, things that, that come from from our own uh, political environment in Mexico, you know, where where our our own people in Mexico are not treating right, you know, the indigenous people, right? So we as Mexican Americans come toward this country demanding that indigenous be treated equally, um, or Native Americans, but we're in our own country are not doing that. Correct. Um, you know, Zapatista movement, you know, and other other movements that, that are happening. So. I think as, as, as we move along and we are starting to be proud of who we are, I think we still need to be um, talking about the issues that we need to fix with, within ourselves. Do you ever get that? Like, do you ever get people talking to you about your artwork? Like, oh, why does it always have to be this? Why does it always have to be kind of Mexican stuff or whatever? Do you get that? Yeah, yeah. You know, and unfortunately, it's a, a, I've had it here in El Paso more. <laughs> and especially, yeah. with, especially with younger artists, you know, that, you know, oh. I, I know I've, I've been like they've told me that my art is too traditional you know like it's too like old school in a way and i'm, I'm kind of in a way i'm proud of it because that is that is what yeah. i want to you know that is i want to i want when I, you see my work i want you to remember your abuelita and respect the work that your abuelita did and respect the hardship and all the struggles your abuelita did for you to be here 
So do you think you. <laughs> do you think yeah. it's because the younger generation doesn't have the same stories that we do? Uh, yeah, and and you know what, and they've had it easier uh, in a way. You know, technology. Mm-hmm. Even I Google shit, you know, I'm like, I need, I need to find out something to Google it. I don't go to the library no more, you know? No, yeah. And, yeah. And I think that, you know, that's a lot of the stuff that, that, that um, and, you know, it's, I think, a lot of things. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry, Victor, oh. I was going to cut you off. No, uh, I had a question, but then I totally forgot it. And I was like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so it's funny that you mentioned that even here in El Paso, you get that kind of feedback because, I, I think I mentioned to Victor that I tend to have more success with my cultural, mm. I say cultural work, what people deem cultural, uh, outside of El Paso, you know, than I do in my own hometown. And then I also have noticed feedback. Uh, I don't know about you. My printmaking work is more Chicano. My watercolor is more botanical. Like whenever I change m- mediums, my style changes. And I've been told, well, then you're not really a Chicano artist because oh, wow. you do, you're not really concentrated on pushing the movement. And it makes me reflect. And I, I have that imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Do you think, it, make me, it makes me wonder, do you think that we as Chicanos, uh, pigeonhole ourselves in a way where people expect us as Chicanos to only create Chicano work? Good question. Well, what is Chicano work? When we create work that shows and promotes our Chicanoism. Yeah, but flowers can be Chicano. They are Chicano, right? (laughs) Right. So what is Chicano work? You're right. Right. It's, uh, you know, uh, going back to Gaspar, Gaspar, one of the things I remember is one one is born... Mexican American, but chooses to be Chicano, yeah. right? And and I think uh, just the, just like the life of a, an artist, people romanticize it. Mm-hmm. I think they romanticize the life of a Chicano. I'm you know we're not Crucito in the in the studio, <laughs> doing drugs, getting yeah. drunk. You know that's not that's not Chicano yeah. art. You know, Chicano <laughs> art is not just folklorico and lowriders. You know it's a lot more. You know, and, and if the Chicano artist is feeling flowers today, why the hell not? You know, let's paint some nopales with some beautiful flowers. And um, and that's how I grew up. You know, my abuelita always had nopales with beautiful flowers and, and growing all this stuff. And that's hmm. my experience. Why, why, what gives you the right to tell me that's not my experience? Mm-hmm. Right? And I, yeah. I, 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 you know, through the pandemic, I think a lot of us went through a lot of changes and, um, uh, I started doing a series of flowers. Yeah. <laughs> we were trying I'm, to we were trying I'm, to... A, I'm a very uh, proud Chicano that paints flowers. Did, did, All right. Did, I feel did you I, show they're them? making me feel really good now. Did you show them? Them? I don't have them with me. Uh, but I'm we'll not, put them up the on the screen. Studio, but, yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you ever going to show them? Are you like, yeah, I've, I've shown them. Um, I think. Uh, uh, you know, I was, I, I have a hard time talking about this stuff, but like I got that award from, from uh, El Paso Inc. And that's mm-hmm. why I remember, like, cause they showed them at the, at that thing. Oh, okay. Uh, cause they were tripping out when they went to the studio. They were like, who painted these? And I'm like, I did. <laughs> <They're> like, what? <laughs> they're, they're copies, you know? And I'm like, yeah. I you know, love I did a, at, the, at the same time, I did a whole mural for the university medical center of just poppies. Just oh, yeah. the, whole, the whole thing. I've, I've um, been drawing poppies. <laughs> that's yeah. funny. Yeah, so, I mean. <laughs> I'm so glad I said that because you have just um, you've made me see my own work differently just right now because I've always thought am I not am I two different people am I no no I'm not I'm not that's fantastic yeah <laughs> you made me reflect on that feeling feeling like two different yeah. people is something I've gone through this I'm not <laughs> schizophrenic man it's just something I felt like being raised here in <laughs> And That's just with trippy. my name and stuff and my background, and it, it's a trip. It's a trip. I had a question. Um, ah, we were talking about flowers and stuff. Uh, You're gonna edit this 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 long. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it in. I'll leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> you see how he is. Um, I, I was gonna ask, what next? Like, where where are you gonna be next? What what comes next? 
Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I've never, I, I've, <laughs> it's so funny because I was about to say, I've never not had a job, yeah. but I've never not had a nine to five responding to somebody else's job, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, this is damn work. You know, mm -hmm. being a full-time artist is work. Yes. And um, so this is the first time I do this. This is the first time that I, that I jump off the cliff and be, be a full-time artist. So um I'm, I'm grateful that I have commissions right now. I, I got awarded uh, a commission from public art from the city. It's going to be my, my biggest mural that I've done to time. And um, I'm grateful that that covers me for, for the rest of the year. So it gives me more time. You know, I have a couple of other um, uh, commissions, but it gives me time to, to talk, you know, to paint what we're talking about those, those experiences or those memories that we had. I want to, I want to get smaller, um, I think I, I've slacked it on the painting smaller, getting more into the museums and do, doing all this. And that's something I want to do. You know, I want, I want to have more presence in there, in, 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 in the museum. I mean, in the galleries, not the museums. Um, but also I want to, I want to continue working with the community. Uh, one of the things that we've decided to do is create a small nonprofit, which we actually just, just did, uh, Comparte. And most of my work is going to be based in Segundo Barrio. You know, I think one of the things that we lack, and it's because of the times, and as we talk about the educational system, what is one of the first things that get cut? Arts. So uh, our kids in the community don't have that opportunity to create or to leave school and do something that is something they want to do with their hands and create. So that's something we want to do. Uh, we, we have a Calavera Culture Shop. Um, that, that we're still working on. We want to continue doing that and make it, you know, something more, more uh, beneficial for artists, more, you know, something strong where artists can create that community where they can talk about what is, is really needed in, in, in El Paso. That was initially what, what we wanted to do. But I think with time, we kind of lost the path a little bit there. But uh, we want to come, come back to that. You know, and COVID had a little bit to it because we couldn't mm -hmm. bring artists together anymore, you know. Yeah. But... Uh, Initially, Calavera was, in a way, you know, a source uh, where you can get supplies that you couldn't really get, you know, anywhere else, and mostly spray paint and, and kind of continue with the, you know, the tradition of graffiti, but also what else can you do, you know, because there's a lot of great things that are doing with letters and, and doing all that, which is, that that's amazing, you know, and it takes a lot of work to coordinate colors and do all that, but kind of start pushing it, start pushing those boundaries to, to do more with spray paint and, and some of those other supplies. So that's kind of like where my, my focus is at right now, you know, creating those memories, you know, uh, Comparte and Calavera and, and just kind of keep making it as, as an artist, you know, and um, I had a, somebody ask me like, if I was going to leave El Paso and go somewhere else, um, and I'm like, no, I think we can do it here. I think we can, uh, I think we, if we hustle it enough and we work it the right way, I mean, there's this the yeah arts community in El Paso is growing and it's getting good. It is, it is. Look there's a lot of heavy Look hitters, right? I yeah. I've been uh, I know you mentioned that you don't like being on social media. Is there a reason why you shy away from it? I just uh, I I personally I waste a lot of time on social media. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you go into okay, something, admit it. you end up looking at something else, and then like yeah. you know. So sometimes I just like uh, you know I. I think social media is something that we need as, as artists to promote ourselves, you know, which is the funniest thing. Like I, I sometimes get requests for, for like murals or something and they want to pay me with promotion. And I'm like, dude, I got, I got Instagram. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't need, I don't need promotion. I need to pay the rent. Uh, but I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> no, that's a very good point. It's a very good point. And it has, it still has, it, incredible that that still happens yes yeah it's incredible yes. there's been so <laughs> yeah, much good work coming out and i think that the pandemic kind of shoved people a little bit forward to take risks and to make major jumps like what you mentioned you did uh, i too sometimes get engrossed with social media and of course I, I follow so many artists and especially from el paso and i'm always going damn look at this oh my god look at that no i'm just like wow this explosion is happening who do you think aside from yourself um is making an impact or are people that we should be talking about right now in the art scene in el paso 
Ah, well, I think it's a lot of people. I think I think we're we were talking about this. I think we're a, a, a community that's really humble, and I think there's a lot of artists that don't um, that don't promote themselves the way that they should because of that. Um, there's this kid. Let me show you. He's he's not a kid. <laughs> Go right on. <laughs> yes. Um, and I forgot his real name because I only saw him on Instagram. He's yeah. gonna be so mad at you. <laughs> no, it's just, you know why? Because he, he had a name like like uh, Tia Press or something. Yeah, yeah. But he was yeah. Tia Dami, and I was like, uh, I, I I knew of him through through Francisco Delgado, and oh, uh, and Manny yeah, from 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 uh, Toad, the, Toad. the horny toads. Horny toads. Thank you. <laughs> and. Uh, and Two great that's how I met him, but I saw him that he was doing this 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 actual print. I saw him on Instagram, mm -hmm. and he get, he asked, Do you, "Does anybody know who this is?" And then um, I finally told him, "That's Corky," and he's like, "Damn, dude, nobody knew who that was." And I was like, "Well, you know, unfortunately, we go back to the same. It's a whole circle. Like, yeah. unfortunately, they're not being thought about Chicanos and the, the Chicano movement, but he's doing some crazy work, and um, you know, and this is." Again, teachers, Manny, Francisco, they're they're the ones that are you know producing all these all these artists through 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 what they're teaching, you know, yeah. and uh, they're pushing them, you know, and, and yeah. I've seen them uh, work with, with with them and be like, hey, well, maybe you can do this or maybe you can do that, or why don't you try this or why don't you try that? And that's what's amazing, you know. I think uh, right now we're in a time where a lot of us that are that are getting old and we're teaching and. Uh, you know, people are in institutions like the community college or, or high schools are, are doing great jobs, you know, uh, producing a lot of these artists and, and, and putting them in those paths to, to, to explore and experiment with different techniques and supporting, you know? Yeah, that's what it's about. I wanted to ask you a question about how you started. I, wanted, I want to take it back, man. Like how you started with the arts. Like, was there a time, do you remember if there was this one moment where you're like, you just click like, yo, I want to do that. Like, did you see something? And where did you take it from there? If I, don't, you did? I don't know. You know, I, I did start doing graffiti. And um, I used to do a lot of graffiti what, in Fiondo. Actually, but, what, what got you into graffiti, though? Because that's another thing is like, what, what pulled you into graffiti? I don't know. I think that was just being a vago, man. Just being a vago? Like, I'm going to write it. Was a, I was a dumb vago. Because my name was not seen, <laughs> and uh, I was still in public school. I was in Roosevelt before I went to private school, and uh, I, I guess I always talked about, you know, you gotta, you gotta do more. We gotta get out of here. We gotta do, uh, you know, you know all that talk. Mm -hmm. And one of the, I remember one of the teachers kept calling me Hollywood. <laughs> you know how we are, like Hollywood. So in my mind, I was like, oh, that's cool tagging name. So. That's what I started tagging. I didn't realize how long that damn name is. <laughs> I think it didn't even like change it. Like so, so, so now that's how I like um, when I when I'm in uh you know when I hear somebody call me, I used to take whole blocks, <laughs> whole city blocks. But you know when I hear somebody call me in Hollywood, you know I real I know that they're really like way back from the bottom. <laughs> yeah. And I, so, but that, that's how, that's how I started doing some of the graffiti, you know, I, um, back in the, back in those days, you know, we, it was, uh, uh, mask, uh, and I, we were doing a lot of that stuff in Segundo. And then, uh, uh we kind of mask went to, to military. I went to Dallas and we kind of like split ways, but one of the last things that, that we did is I think it was the beginning of the, one of the downtown festivals we're talking about years ago. And, uh, that was the first time that we got paid to do a, like a like a like a piece. Uh, we uh -huh. did like some a few murals on on four by eight sheets of plywood uh -huh. and put it together and it was for the festival. Um, but even then, I don't think I, I I thought about that being something that I wanted to do. You know, I, I was studying to be a history teacher. That was oh. my, my... <laughs> wow. And how did that go? <laughs> well, part of it also you realize that when you leave El Paso and you leave UTEP, there's there wasn't really much. Chicano study programs everywhere else, right? right? Not a lot of the stuff that you, the, the, a, lot of the credits, <laughs> a lot of the hours that you got here, you kind of lost them. So yeah. then I, I just went back to just regular history. But, um, you know, like I said, my, you know, life kind of changed on me and, um, you know, I ended up not, not finishing, but um, I think what changed me was being in Dallas and, and working with that group with Yolanda Alameda and Arte Oak Cliff over there that kind of 
started thinking that, you know, there's other ways to, to work with our communities, you know, that mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be through, through going into school and teaching, but we can do that in different ways. And it was through, mm -hmm. through cultural arts or through cultural uh, environments. Do you feel like some of us do need to actually be out for a while to kind of like leave realize, El Paso? Yeah, like leave El Paso for a bit. To appreciate what we have here. I think so. And not just appreciate, but also learn um like learn other ways of doing things other way the way that other people live you know and also like um i love el paso but el paso we don't have a lot of that cultural diversity that other cities have you know so i think like even experiencing other other cultural other cultures would be would be great you know my wife's from boston you know and, and her family just recently moved to baltimore but even those two cities are so different right so even visiting you know, Boston is like gives you another, you know, like you meet other people, even you meet other Latinos, you know, you meet other. So I think even experiencing that is great, you know, and it opens your mind into other, into other, even ideas, you know, I think even people that have moved out and, and, and have explored the, you know, the business world have learned yeah. about other, other way of doing businesses and they come back and they, they try that here. That's even, interesting that yeah. you brought up Boston because my son moved to Boston six years ago <clears throat> and when he was first left and he came back and he goes, I never thought I'd miss El Paso as much as I did. The food, the sounds, the language, just craving to hear mm -hmm. the language. He goes, and, and I would be in a crowd and I heard Spanish, I, I could hear Spanish coming from cool. some distance. It's like I recognize that's Spanish, you know, <clears throat> he goes, it took me to leave to appreciate what I have here. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, he's still out there and he loves, you know, I don't think he'll ever come back home, but now El Paso means something else to him because he realizes how special and different it is. Yeah. Even if you don't go and live somewhere, even traveling around, mm -hmm. you get to see it. Mm -hmm. I went to Austin one time and I was like, where are all the Mexicans at? And then I, I ended up passing the freeway going over this over the freeway and all of a sudden like hey they're right here like there was a section I'm like what the hell dude the, there's the those, pink uh, house well there's a place to eat we're definitely gonna go there have some tacos and see what's up and was, it was totally different I was like wow it's like sectioned off and yeah that made me that made that little that little moment made me realize a lot about how right, let's talk about gerrymandering and yeah. And all like everything getting, being sectioned off. I was like, wow, dude, like, okay, that, that opened my eyes. So yeah. people go, yeah. go travel, go, go for a couple yeah. of days here and there, man. You're going to see how different it is and see what's up, man. And, and we, we haven't congratulated you on the success you've had. Um, I always am very happy to see when someone from our community, uh, you know, grown here or somebody that represents us does well because it reflects on everybody. It reflects on our community. Uh, and I, yes. I know when I talk to people from out of town or I travel or whatever, I'm always proud to talk about the work that is created here. And, and I, for one, am very grateful for people like you that put our city and put our culture in, in such a beautiful way. Not all of us can have that same outreach. And so you, you represent a lot of people in this community with your work. You do. No, thank you. I appreciate that. And I always appreciate you know when people support not just me but local artists and i think the more that we support each other and work together and and have those those uh, interactions with each other i think that's how el paso and our communities will keep growing you know i think uh we've struggled in el paso for for a lot of things you know support uh, not only financially but even with each other you know because we need yeah. we need to understand how arts work but i think the more we, we, we get through that the more the more we're going to keep creating and making the city yeah more, more beautiful definitely exactly you know i loved i loved seeing you grow man since i met you and being out there and doing all these pieces man you're like you just blown up as a person man and it, it, it's awesome seeing your your growth dude and, 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 and we're like exactly like lorena was talking about so grateful that you took time off of your busy i'm sure your busy schedule uh, i know that every chance i get i'm in my studio <laughs> nobody bothered me in my yeah. <laughs> it, it's golden it's a golden yeah. hour so yeah, I'm no, very yeah. Great. I, I usually take sundays kind of like and there's something else that i had to learn especially after 
you know, leaving leaving the nine to five and becoming like my own boss. Like I always so they say, like I gotta go back to work because my boss is an asshole. Mm. But <laughs> but <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sometimes that. But it, it's it's a uh, that scheduling yourself, you know, and and um, try not to burn out because if I'm in the studio all week, you know, yeah. Saturdays, you know, I, I need. I've learned that I need to make myself take breaks because mm-hmm. I'll keep going. I'll keep going and then I'll get frustrated with the peas and then I'll just like, you know, I'll throw it or I'll do something to it. So if I don't take breaks, uh, that's how I end up, but I have to learn to do that, you know? Um, and that's like, you know, we talk about traveling, you know, I, I love traveling, but at the same time I would leave. And then I'm like, I got all this work in the studio I got to do. Yeah. And I keep thinking about that so like it's like some of the things that I think as, as as I keep getting older I'm like I need to figure out how to work with this you know uh I don't you know we talked about how I used to party so much like I kind of don't do that anymore but I feel like I've replaced some uh, addictions with others so like I don't drink much anymore like but I feel like I'm a workaholic now yeah <laughs> like I have to be in the studio. I have to be doing something or else, you know, I'm like, I, I feel like, oh, what am I going to do? Uh, so I've had to learn to do that too. Like I have to take breaks. I have to take like days off. You know? yeah. I don't want to burn myself out. I, yeah. I've Is been there... telling myself that, man. I'm oh, sorry. I've been telling myself like, hey, today I'm going to chill. And then 11 o'clock, like, no, I got to go draw. I'm like, damn, I'm like, right, I'm <laughs> yeah. take... it's that work, that work ethic that we have been growing, that yeah. we grew up with. And I wanted to, I don't know if uh, I wanted to ask this question real quick about about your leap, man. Like from working full time job, right? Um, at, I don't know. If, well, I, I could I could edit the name out if you want. From working over there to all of a sudden, just like you said, being your own boss. Can you can you walk us through that? Because I know I know an instance right now that there's somebody um, at this moment they're counting the. Day days until they stop their job and they're going they're going to do art full-time and i think there's a lot of us that are and, are how, going and how did you prepare for that yeah uh, first first of all I, I prepared financially that's something mm-hmm. that i wanted to do uh um i i had some commissions and then i kept putting money aside so then i started um uh started talking to people like you know People have done it before. Um, so then I created a, a company. Basically, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now Simi Fine Arts LLC, right? So I, I was, while I was thinking about this, I was, you know, I was still working, but I was like, still like, uh, you know, creating this plan. So I, I created all that, you know, while I was still on the clock, you know, not physically on the clock, but right, you know, thinking about it yeah. and collecting a paycheck uh, that was secure. I think the, the 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 scariest part is not having that security of that check coming in the next you know the, the next week or the next two weeks. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I wanted to make sure that I was prepared financially. So I gave myself you know a year, right? And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't come up with a, a money for a year like in, you know whatever I, I you know I was saving. <laughs> so yeah. it took me a while. So I. And that's kind of like how I talk to my wife too. You know what? You know, I'm going to do this. If it's not going to work, you know, I give myself a year, but we, we're like in the 10th month and it's not working. I'm going to have to figure it out and start looking for a job. And, you know, I'm lucky enough that she's supportive of that. And, um, and I think that's another thing, you know, I think you have to create your circle, your, your inner circle of the people that you're, you're going to trust and they're going to support you. Uh, you have that supportive system that is going to help you out if, if something goes wrong. Yeah. Um, but you know, I kind of started looking at all that, and then, well, what is it that I'm that I'm gonna do? You know, I started kind of like, you know, if, if it's gonna be the muralism that I think is gonna keep me going, then I, I gotta, you know, keep going with that and and come up with a, not necessarily a business business plan, but a plan on how how would I do this, and um, and then I just I just did it, you know, I think most importantly, and I keep saying is like I think the financial part, you know, because I think. If you're still trying to create and you're hungry, <laughs> it's not gonna work out. If you still try to create and you don't have you know electricity to, to to do that, or you're not gonna have you know money to buy more supplies, yeah, that's gonna be the so I think if uh for me what worked 
is the planning, you know, and then doing it when I had enough uh, support for, for that, for that amount of time. Uh, do you, how was your first day without, I guess, um, the nine to five. Yeah, your first day without the nine to five, like you did woke you, up. Did and you like, cry? Oh, <laughs> did you feel, man? It's a. Uh, the other day, I was my, my I was talking to my wife, and actually we're having this conversation about being a workaholic, yeah. and and she was telling me like, yeah, you know what? I thought it was weird that your first day, not having a like a job, you know, I thought you were gonna like, you know, get off you in pajamas all day or something. Like you just got off and went to the studio at eight, you know, be in studio by eight, and I was like, well, yeah, I mean that was, that's how I replaced my job you know with my with what i want to do you know i guess in my in my mind i was so eager to start my uh my career as an artist yeah. you know that i wanted to be there like little kid my first day of school you know i buy right. new shoes and <laughs> 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 but i was you know, like i wanted to be there and then i was like okay so i'm here now what <laughs> yeah. you know? so then i was like okay well let's get this thing done but um but yeah you know and i think that also like leaving uh leaving my my job i i caught a lot i cut a lot of uh uh strings that kind of i felt attached to you know like i feel like i can op talk more openly about things uh, mm -hmm. about my politics about you know i can say whether well, whatever the hell i want without getting in trouble you know or not getting i mean but you know what no, I, mean. I get you i get you I that's, get you. that's interesting you said that because just this week i told someone look these are things you cannot say when we're with this group of people <clears throat> because this is how it's going to be misconstrued and you're exactly right there's a language you have to know how to speak mm -hmm. when you have a job you cannot speak freely and i don't care where you work that's the way it is yeah. especially if your opinions are different from you know those on top or those that pay the pay the bills <laughs> yeah. you have to play yeah. the game it's tough yeah. Do you yeah. still have that? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, but I'm gonna, I was going to say like if, if if somebody wants to do that, I think. I mean, if it's if it's a job that you think you could just leave and get another one, I think you just give it a try, man. And if you don't, if it doesn't work out, being an artist, you tried it, you know, and now you know, like, or you make the mistakes that you know next time that you try it, you're not gonna make. And I yeah. I think you're just doing it. I think I'm still making little jumps. Victor took a leap. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, oh, is that is that is that what, is that how it looked from the outside? That's what it looked like, man. It looked like you just leaped over, and I'm like, oh shit, let me see. <laughs> is it the parachute to... open? <laughs> You're like, yo, I don't know if I got a parachute in this thing, but I'm gonna jump it, man. Let me know. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I think. <laughs> no, I told you that was one of my last things that I was. I told you was like, I was like, oh, I'll let you. How, I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, man. I tough. think for I... the. Hmm? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I think we all have that. Well, I assume that most artists want to spend all of their time, right? We have all of these ideas. And I think that's my biggest complaint. I don't have time. I don't have time. I have these jobs and, and family. And oh my God, what would it be like if I didn't have the nine to five and I had my time here? But then again, just like you said, I got to pay the bills. I got to pay this. I got to pay that. So it's really tough. It's tough. I feel, I feel you have to stick with it. You know, a lot of people think, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit two, three months. Okay, oh, it's not working out. Hey, keep on going, dude. And even with that nine to five, I, I, I told someone yesterday too. If you stick with that, um, if you give yourself that energy that you were giving that, that you were giving your your corporation or your work, you're, you, you'll succeed, man. You'll succeed. Like put that, put that, reinvest that energy back. And into yourself, and you're gonna. Well, that's my theory. Though. Yo, I'll let you know how it goes. Yo, I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> but that, okay. that's how I felt, man. And it's not yeah. just. Uh, I think you have to. I think, as I was saying, that we romanticize the life of an artist. I yeah. think mm -hmm. we, we as artists, we need to get out of that too, because yeah. you might not make it just doing paintings. Like I myself, right now, I'm, I'm not just painting. I'm. I'm, uh, I'm I'm working with the schools and we're doing some you know workshops. We're doing you know I'm helping them come up with with stuff. You know, as they come over and ask me for advice. You know, it came to a point I was like, oh wait a minute, <laughs> I'll give you my advice for this much, you know, right. because you're basically doing your job at this point. So yes, exactly. you, know, it, you you have to be able to you know you are you are a creative person. So use that 
to make money too. Not, you know, you don't have to be stuck. Yeah. To a, to a very house. good point. Very good point. Somewhere else. No, for real. Because this is your work. That's so right. I, I talked to a friend like, hey, when are you going back to work? I'm like, I am working. What do you mean? Like, oh, yeah. no, the other work. No, I'm working, dude. Like, this yeah. is my work. You're, you're calling me during my work hours now. <laughs> like, come on, dude. For sure. It's all work, man. Different and, mindset. Uh, start getting paid for, for your experience. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I was I was doing all these uh, uh, talks, you know, public speaking, and it was cool. Um, and I think this one person ruined it for everybody because she's like, "How much do you charge?" I was like, "Oh shit, I didn't know I could charge, but yeah, let's do this." <laughs> <laughs> How much do you have? <laughs> so, so I'm sorry, but now I'm charging. <laughs> yeah. Like Is there course, maybe. anything that you feel that we haven't touched on that you would like to say? Um, no, I think, uh, again, we, we talked a little bit about it, but I think this, this is what, what you guys are doing is great. I, I, uh, I talk about the educational system and, and even some of the libraries, how they don't do some of the jobs, which is archiving our history, archiving our stories. You know, we saw it when we tried to do a mural of the musicians of Segundo Barrio, you know, when, you know, right now I'm working on a, on a project where we're doing a, a mural, uh, of the Chicano movement in Segundo Barrio, more specific on some organizations. So we go to libraries, we go to some so many places trying to get archives, and we we don't have any archives of our, wow. our a lot of stories. So just by doing this, I think you guys are doing something great, which is archiving stories of artists and archiving the stories in their own words. Because at this point, I'm not getting the stories from musicians or from artists, you know, from back then in their own words, because unfortunately, some have passed away. So what you guys are doing is great because it's like you're archiving it and it's the artist's words, you know, that are, that are, that are telling the story. That's funny that you say that. Right now when you're saying that you went to the, the libraries and they don't have that, I bet you anything that your community, you know, people from the barrio and everything, we probably have so much imagery in shoe boxes and stuff. And I say, I'm looking around because um, I was just cleaning out something yesterday, looking for something else. As an, I'm gonna stereotype. I'm, I am an artist that has stuff everywhere and I try to be organized, but my mind just doesn't work that way. I try my best stuff. Sometimes I open stuff and I go, oh, wow, that's where that went. Dude, my abuelito with his burro. You know, yeah. I sent that to my kids and they're like, oh my God. <laughs> Mom, yeah. who's that girl on the burro? Me. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. I, I think we are our own keepers of our history and of our culture. It's, it's all out there. We just got to reach those people. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Oh. I have really enjoyed talking to you. I really have. And it's always a pleasure to talk to artists and, and the way they think. I learned so much. I hope it's not the last time. No, Sometimes I hope not either. In the either. future, we, we, we <laughs> meet you. again and see how you're doing. Um, this has been fantastic. I'm very glad we did this. No, thank yeah. you guys for having me. It's, it was great to, to be invited to talk to you guys. It's been a great Thank you, Sammy, for everything you've been doing, man. Thank you, yes. man. Yes. Very inspirational. Yes, you all are. Of, to all of us, man. And I don't know if you know that. I know you know it. <laughs> but... <laughs> But keep on doing it, man. Keep on rocking it, man. We see you. We see you, man. We yeah, see you. yeah, we I see hope, you. I hope something comes out of it. I hope something comes out of it, and people will get inspired to create more, more work that is, you know, for our community. You know, because that's it is, man. It is. All right, you you said that you would go in at eight. Do you still follow that schedule? How long did that last? Uh, I still try to follow eight. I get there by nine. Oh, okay. By nine, and I, I if I get there like at nine, I leave at six. Right. Yeah. But, oh yeah. But uh, yeah, I've been I've been trying to do that because yeah, it's been hard, you know, uh, uh, trying to get out of the whole workaholic situation. Because now I'll I'll I used to stay in the studio till like after after midnight before. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I started seeing myself like, no, nah, I mean, I'm gonna burn myself out, and I would, <laughs> I mean, like I have a bunch yeah. of paintings that I that haven't finished because of the same thing. I would get bored or just like. You know, I don't want to deal with it anymore. And I think that's part of it. But yeah, I try to do that. And then uh, and like the weekends, if I, you know, sometimes go like half a day uh, um, just to, you know, work on something. But 
try not to be there all day on the weekends. That's good that you have a studio, man, because you have a place to go. Someone what someone asked me the other day, hey, do you have a studio? I was like, no, I pay too much for my house. That I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna pay for a studio. <laughs> this is my studio. <laughs> I'll pay too much, man. So yeah. it, you know, but I think it does feel a lot nicer if you're somewhere because mm-hmm. you're you're not here having to cook and do all these things and getting so distracted, man. So it's like your job, your place. That's cool, man. Yeah, and I think that's what ha- that was happening to me too. I do have a studio here. I don't I don't use anymore. My at one point my daughter moved in and, and she was in there for a while. But uh, what was happening to me is I was like two, two <laughs> I was five steps away from the house. I would like come in and come in to with the excuse to get something to drink, and then I would like turn on the yeah. TV and then you know, and I I I don't have that that um, the structure in my like myself to do that. You know, I would just blow away a whole day here watching tv or something yeah. but that, yeah that might CB, be the break that we need yeah if you don't mind oh. my asking and you don't have to answer this question how old are you i'm 25 <laughs> 25 make sure, yes. make sure you put that in the video okay <laughs> i'm gonna be 45 this year okay yeah. yeah when you mentioned like older kids i was like dude how old are you look you're in the, your 30s or something uh, i have my daughter really young she's gonna be 23 this year wow so. yeah you look very young men always look young to cut damn it and no i don't dye my beard I, mean, I, mean, I, I do <laughs> I don't dye it. that grecian formula <laughs> box is right there i see it <laughs> yeah I, I just get the this old krylon and i just put you know, <laughs> that's it some some black no, no, no. right on Thank you. We don't want to take up too much of your time. Yeah. Are you sure? I, my wife's waiting for me to do yard work. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like, uh, send us a oh. picture of that. <laughs> we'll put it on there. All right. Hey, yeah. y'all. All right. <laughs> I was, I was all right. The, we have laureles and I was cutting them. I was just cutting the side of the house and then my neighbor's like, hey, are you going to cut this side too? Because they're coming over. And I'm like, oh, dude, come on. <laughs> okay. okay. We still got to throw a show together. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I know we always say that every time I run into everybody, <laughs> like, yeah, all right, let's do it. And then, like, ten years later, like, all right, and an exhibition. Yeah, yes, an put, exhibition. We should. I I say the same thing. Like, do they have boxes and boxes of work? We should have an exhibition. Yeah. Hey. I don't. I don't know what. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right. Appreciate. We'll see you guys. Bye. Bye.